Hi everyone, welcome back to Face It Live. I'm Dr. G and I have the pleasure today of having my dear friend, Lamor Weinberg, on here with us. We are so excited to get into all the things, the truths, the fakes, the, the real, the raw. Lamor is a board certified nurse practitioner and master in aesthetics with over 20 years of experience. Many people, you guys don't have that much experience. It's amazing. She founded the Clinic USA to provide intimate boutique style training options in the, com in the competitive field of aesthetics. Known for her popular lip mapping technique, we'll talk all about it, Lamore trains both novice and experienced injectors uh, and aesthetic providers. Join her in learning the latest techniques in skincare and anti-aging treatments. We love her. She was awarded as the top 100 best aesthetic injectors in America for three years now, and the Clinic USA is a go-to training facility, is the the go-to training facility in the country. And you are so phenomenal. Welcome. I just today, by the way, I just today launched my AI course. And then I have also like, I'm launching a mentorship as well. So there's a lot of things happening. Let's talk about the mentorship because okay. I have my fingers and toes into that too. Yeah. And tell me why. I mean, it's obvious why you want to do it, but. Um, I constantly have people asking me people are always reaching out to me and asking me questions and I just feel like individually answering people is not enough. I have a community that I started um, online and I feel like it's so beneficial for people to all be together and benefiting from the answers instead of answering like one person here, one person here, one person here, it's easier to do it all at one time, you know? So in the community, we have like a weekly calls like Zoom calls or whatever, and it, we talk about whatever topics are happening at that time, right? So like, what was it, two weeks ago, they had the whole like, taking a chip appetite off of the short list, like things like that, like topics that people want to talk about, know about. So just, I felt like I had a lot of information to offer people and instead of offering it just to one person at a time, it was easier to offer it to a group. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And you meet once, you said a month or a week? So we have weekly calls, like weekly calls. calls for whoever wants to do. It's also recorded on, on the, in the community. And then on top of that, we have like, if someone wants like a, a, a call, they can just schedule a call with me as part of being in the community. And then the mentorship is separate. The mentorship is actually a year long mm -hmm. and it goes over everything. Like how to get started. If you're already in a practice, if and you, you're thinking about leaving, like when is the right time to go? What, what do you do with your space? How do you find a space? What, what's the best way to do that? Like how much money is your space supposed to be producing? Like per square foot, like all of these things like are in there. And then I have also, well, I haven't done it yet, but I would like to get people like you on to talk about your experiences. Like all these experienced people that I have like in my Rolodex, you know, that I'm like, everybody is so amazing and has so many things to offer that are so different. Yeah. You know? So I think the every mentorship is so cool yeah. too, because for me, at least it <laughs> offered me, so, you know, as things grow, they get more complex and they get yeah. more involved and this and that and locations and all of that. It brought me back to the basics. It brought me back to why yeah. I started G face going into um, some of the more basic decisions at that time. And I loved that. And it's just you so fun so to go through it with someone. You have so much experience that you can offer. There's so many people getting into this field right now and they yeah. feel very lost. Yeah. Because, you know, if you, if you haven't been in it for a while and you're trying to step into it now, you're kind of like, okay, but where do I go with There's so much information. Like you don't know who to listen to. You don't know what's going on, which products to get, like, how to get them. Like, there's so many things that you could be so overwhelmed. I, mean, I get overwhelmed still. Like, patients yeah. come into my office and like, have you heard of this? I'm like, no, I'm like looking it up. I'm like, this. No I know. And it's also who, t who should you listen to? I love that because yeah. there is so much access to so many people and it was so amazing, a perfect example. One of my providers was calling all of the compounding pharmacies and other labs to get information on production of terzepatide and the other GLP-1 agonists, but also calling the pharmacies, Walgreens, CVS, see who takes insurance, who doesn't, just gathering facts. There is no rhyme or reason to any of it. There's no, you know, there's so many different ways to do certain things. Some people take yeah. insurance, some people don't. There are different costs. I mean, it's just crazy. And so to try to build something, for example, like a weight loss program from scratch, we yeah. have a lot of, you know, materials, but it's overwhelming because we don't know where to go. There's too much. Yeah. Um, 
And like, again, you know, you could Google or you could try GPT it, but at the end of the day, like you want to go to a provider or be in a group or, or somebody that you feel like has that credibility that you can listen to and that you could be like, all right, well, Gretchen said this, so I'm going to go with that. You know, Mm -hmm. like you want to kind of have that credibility in in the group so that people are not scrambling around because I feel like that's what happens especially like in our industry like you go to a conference and there's like five million you know sessions for example and you're like well which one do I I don't how how do you even choose but you don't know how to choose when you number one don't know who's speaking you don't know their background and so these conferences don't filter out the provider the, the educators based really on anything. I mean, what are yeah. they, how are they choosing them? I mean, I feel like a lot of are not even popularity. Yeah. Like, and who's it's popular like, on Instagram? Who's going to get them more exposure, more exposure for that conference, you know? And I don't want to, like, say anything bad about any conferences. Like, I don't even really, like, participate in many of them. But I just feel like that's kind of where we're at in general. Like, mm-hmm. in, on in Instagram, if you have a large following, I'll give you a perfect example of this. Mm-hmm. I, um, there is a UK based injector. I don't think she's licensed. I don't think she has any medical background at all. She has, I think now about 500 K followers. It doesn't have, she has a location in the UK. I actually took a course with her for the sheer reason that I wanted to know if her before and after photos were accurate. I was like, wow. like, what is, what is going on? I was already going to be in the UK. I was like, whatever, let me just take a course with this this thing maybe she maybe I'll learn something you know like you never know you learn from everybody and I did actually learn some things from her but about what to do or what not to do both there was a point that I was standing there with her and she was pulling the caps off of the needles with her teeth and I was like do I run now or do I stay like I'm not sure what to do like it was so wild and anyway, so I, I met, you know, she, she comes up on Instagram. I see her all the time and I see people going to her. I see celebrities going to her and I'm just like, they don't know. People don't know. And that's another topic that, I mean, mm-hmm. like the regulation of aesthetics is. Well, the there's law. no, it's the lack there's of. nothing. It's like, and, and the weird thing is like, for example, in Florida, you have to be um, an NP, PA, MD, you know, like. Uh, you have to have like that higher education, like a master's minimum to be able to inject um, or do aesthetics. And it's just really crazy to me because there's so Florida is so lax and everything else. But then like you'll go to other states where you don't even have to be anything. You don't even have to be school. So it's like, it, I, in my opinion, it should be a federal regulation across the board so that the customers are not confused. Because that's what happens is that Forget about the practitioners being confused, which happens also. No one knows what the rules are, right? I know. But then, but then, like, the customers don't know. So they're like, are you an esthetician? Are you, like, people refer to me all the time as an esthetician, which actually I am. But that's not my license that allows me to inject, right? So it's like, how do you communicate this to people? It's very confusing because... Unfortunately, what we do is beauty related and it's compared to like a hair salon or a nail salon or, you know, something along those lines, like, you know, being an esthetician, doing facials, like it's not that it's, it's a medication. We prescribe medication, you know, and it should definitely be regulated. It's not because like, it's just not, I feel like it's just not valued, you know? Yeah. We've always been kind of like the step right headed stepchild of <laughs> medicine. Do you feel that way? I do. I think it's getting less and less, it's obviously. Me- and it's getting yeah, especially now with just the holistic approach, right? With the peptides and ID therapy and now weight loss management and everything that's creating the feeling of beauty inside and out, right? Whole health. I think it's really changing. And I do believe, and I've always believed that everybody wants to be their best self. Everyone wants wants to be the most confident. Everyone wants to make the most money. And so how do we get there? But I think what we're, I think what we're truly getting better at is the consultation, how to manage these patients, expectations and complication management is really how we're, how we're accelerating. We're getting, we're getting more selective, not only with the patients that we accept into our practices, but the products we use because we see what is happening. We're smarter. We're less, we're less quick to adapt to new products on the market or to, to, yeah. to new strategies because 
you know, I, I tell my providers all the time, ask why, why and how, why and how, why and how. And I, you know, on the flip side of that, I'm also the first to be like, yeah, just try it. But that is a different type of trying. That's with reconstitution of neurotoxin, for example. Let's think outside of the box a little bit here. Let's think outside of the box when it comes to hyaluronic acid fillers. What are they really made of and why are we so attached to a product that's named KISS and it can only go in the lip? That's called branding, right? So it's really, I think we're just getting smarter as a whole. And you know, I'm a huge ultrasound person and that also brings a totally different dimension to aesthetics. So I think that's why. That's great. I've always kind of thought about, I mean, doing the ultrasound just seems very overwhelming to me to like bring that in and learn a whole new thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, definitely something to be said about just being comfortable and doing what you normally do, which yeah. I don't necessarily think is a good thing, but you know, everyone has like their avenue and my avenue is kind of on the outside of that. Like, I don't necessarily want to continue doing fillers and Botox all day. I get a lot more fulfillment from, for example, like mentoring, teaching, you know, educating is more my, I guess my cup of tea at this point, that. you know, I don't necessarily find it fulfilling to do filler all day. I agree with you. And if it's, it's tired. now, it's exhausting. Yeah. yeah. You're going to burn out. Um, and you have a creative outlet that you spend time on too. I know my creative outlet, <laughs> my creative outlet. It's like, I don't know. I, I mean, I definitely need it. And that's why I got into injecting anyway, because that was my creative outlet in the beginning. And then it kind of just develops into other things and you kind of evolve as an injector, as a person, as a, you know, provider and you're like, okay, what's next? Mm -hmm. But that's how I've always been. Yeah. But not everyone's like that. People could do this for 20 years and be fine. And be happy. Yeah. And if all yeah. of you guys, if you guys listening don't know her, she has another company called Fillers Anonymous which is, how would you describe it? It's just the most amazing branded, it's, um, aesthetic focused company. Yeah, so it's basically like a tongue in cheek, very niche uh, clothing and merch brand that basically plays on words and things that we use every day, you know? It's just fun. I felt like if I saw one more shirt that said like some generic like, Botox. I was like, no, 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 I can't, I can't look at that anymore. Like we need something more fun. Yeah. But everyone is fun. Yeah. In, in our industry, like we're, we're fun. So like, why, wear, why are these shirts the so boring? I know the blue, my power suit, I know. Sweat suit, like literally every single day, oh every my. single well, day. You know, what's funny. Like there's certain things, items that I kind of like, slow down on the production of it because I've been focusing on other things, but, um, you know, it's still there, it's still sell things like online. I realized that also doing merch is just, there's such a low profit margin and I still want to put out fun stuff and like cool stuff, but it's just like kind of taken I, other things have taken my attention, but there's some things I created that are really meaningful to me. And that power suit was one of oh, them I love because that. just the blue, just the fact that you know, it was a bunch of women, you know, when, when we saw each other at the, um, the top 30 yeah, well, women, um, you know, provider, female providers. And I was like, that just means so much to me. And like the fact that we've kind of established ourselves as entrepreneurs and business owners and, and like kind of broken that ceiling was so cool to me. And I'm like, this is what it has to be. Like it has to be blue with a little bit of pink, just a little feminine, and like that power blue is so meaningful. Like if you look up what the power blue suit was, I mean, it was like taking control of the boardroom, right? Like yeah. that's what we're doing. So, so good. sky's the limit. Yeah. Um, kind of shooting off of that for a second. Do you believe truly that we are received and perceived as equals in our industry specifically? And what are some examples? Like, do you have examples of things where you've been like, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have to share if you don't feel comfortable. No, it's, no, no, no. It's not that. It's like, you know, sometimes I wonder if it's like my perception because of like negative talk, you know, to myself, or if it actually happened is happening, you know, like you kind of, you you wonder yourself, you're like, okay, what is this? Am I just thinking? you know, in a negative way about things. Like, should I think in a different way? I'll give you an example. So 
I was part of, I mean, I, I still part of it, but um, a conference called Master Injector. And I just remembered, and they're gonna kill me for sharing this, but <laughs> I just remembered, um, you know, we were three of us, okay? It was Dr. Benji Dillon, Dr. Mariano Busso in Miami, based out of Miami, and then me, right? It was just three of us. And I remember like walking into the conference on the first day and they had these two huge posters of Dr. Benji Dillon and Dr. Russo. And I'm like, where's my poster? Mm -mm. And I was like, and you know, a lot of that could be ego, right? Like I'd be like, oh, where's my poster? Like I can have a poster, I'm part of this, like I'm headlining this conference, right? Like in a way. And I was kind of disappointed about that and I did mention it to them and they were like, we're just like an oversight, like, you know, everyone was like saying, this person was in charge of making the posters, this person was in charge. I was like, okay, so next year I'll have a poster, right? Three years, no poster. What? Yeah. So I was just like, but what is it? You know, now it's a little different because they don't even have posters of anyone, but it's just kind of like weird to me. I was like, so is it because I'm a woman? Hmm. Like I'm the only woman? Like, but that could be my perception of that. Uh, I don't think you know? there's much to perceive here. There's kind of facts. Like there's posters right, or they're not. Okay. Like, okay. Unless it's over here in the corner somewhere, but. Yeah, but it was like, there's just three of us. I'm like, how do you not pay attention to that? Like, also, you know, in general, and I'm not trying to be, you know, a bitch about it, but men don't necessarily pay attention to the same details that we would, you know? Yeah. So there's that too. Yeah, there's that. But you're giving them credit. I don't give them credit for that. I say you messed up. I deserved a poster. Yeah, I mean, well, I did. Too. Yeah, good for you. But, yeah, but I think that was still... an example of like where I felt like, okay, it was just because like I'm a woman, like that they didn't include me in that. Like that's weird. I really mm -hmm. haven't felt it too much in other ways. I definitely feel like in general, this industry started with a lot of plastic surgeons that are men. And then the nurses were their assistants, right? Mm -hmm. So it's been hard, and I'm sure even before I was in this industry, to kind of break out of that, right? Because, like, men are the plastic surgeons, then they hire nurse practitioners, generally women, to be their assistants in the office and do their other work that they don't want to do, right? So, like, injecting is one of those things. But they were like, well, I'm too busy for that. I don't want to do that. So, I mean, I definitely think that there's something to be said about it being a male dominated industry in general, but maybe more on the plastic side, I feel like women have kind of taken off on that. And that's one of the things too, that, you know, I know that there is the aesthetic extender conference in Miami mm -hmm. and I know now it's kind of called AES, like they're kind of referring to it more as that. And that was a big thing for me because I was like, well, what are we extending? Like, and that wasn't for, for women primarily, but you know, we are the ones that are in aesthetics. Like I would say we kind of dominate that. Would you, would you agree? Yeah. It's funny. I didn't really ever know what that word meant. <laughs> I was like, extender was a, was work was used traditionally as like the nurse being an extension of the physician. Oh, so is that, yeah. Okay. Is that what they meant by the phrase though? Is that like the We were or... nurse practitioners and like mid-level. Yeah. Um, no, I mean for the days. conference. Like, is well, that yeah, how they intended days. it? So th I think they were trying to find a niche, which was like the mid-level, mm. which was the nurse practitioners and PAs. So that's like how they called it or mm. what they called it. But I think now they're kind of moving, you know, I'm like, it's 2024. Like, let's try to yeah. move it's in. And I think she is. She did. She kind of is like trying to rebrand, but I'm sure she has like, you know, it's like, trademarked and all that so it's gonna be it, it's difficult to kind of like change the name in the middle of like you know you have a conference having a conference in general is hard enough yeah yes i know that as you know <laughs> so you know having to then rebrand and change your name and all those things but i think like i've been seeing like even this past year like how they're advertising it's like aes you know, mm -hmm. you know that's much that's better good. extender because like i was like what the hell are we extending like we're yeah. well, most of us work for ourselves or like yeah. have our own practice or, you know, but people who do still work for plastic surgeons, I mean, primarily those are men. I mean, I can probably think of two female plastic surgeons that I know. Yeah. 
So yeah, I think it's interesting because it is, it's predominantly female um, across the board, but then you do, it's the, the men that are still there that are kind of out of touch, but for some weird reason, they're the ones speaking on stage and they are the experts and they're in the publications. Like, how does this make any sense? It's just yeah. so funny and convoluted, but. You know, it's funny. I'm not really part of that. Like I haven't gotten to that level where like, you know, where people are getting published and like, I'm not around those people necessarily. Like maybe the only one that I'm around is like Lee Walker, you know, mm -hmm. but I definitely noticed when I think you and I were at the same conference in, um, in Paris. Yeah. A few years ago. Yeah. Like most of the people on stage were men, mm -hmm. but I feel like in Europe it is still predominantly men. Like women have not really infiltrated there. It's, it is, I feel like men also get more respect there. And it's unfortunate that, you know, women have so much to offer and it, you know, it's also just the culture in Europe, right? Like the culture in Europe is different than the U S and men are still considered like the breadwinners, the leaders, the, you know, but then you have people like, oh, why can I think of her name? Julie Horn. Uh, what? I was going to say Julie Horn. No, not Julie Horn. Um, the, uh, Madam, oh my God, what is her name? She's like the owner of, of, of a T.O. Salon, like Revance. Oh, I don't know. Um, I, I, I need to look up her name, but, I, my, but we're on my phone. But what is her name? Ma Madam. Owner of, is it, she's the owner of Revance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is a badass. I mean, this woman is. No, this is a, why did it give me the wrong thing? She actually was the original creator of Jupiter. Oh. You gotta know her. It says Crown Laboratories. <laughs> this just says Crown Laboratories. Right, hold on, let me, let me look it up. <laughs> hold on, I, I have to look this up for you now. Valerie. Yeah, Valerie. Mm-hmm. What was the last name? Talpen? Talpen. 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 Thank you, Rachel. T-A-U-P-I-N. I was like, why can't I think of her last name? Sounds yeah. familiar, actually. So she is like a badass. Hmm. And like, she started as an esthetician, actually. I she, Yeah, she's like, I mean, a that, that's a woman to like really study. Cause she, that. she kind of like broke every barrier. I mean, she started, I think she started as an esthetician, then she went to sell device. She was selling devices. This is like 20 wow. years ago or even more. And then she, um, she started a company. She then created that uh, Juvederm, the original Juvederm. She sold it. Then she started, you know, Teosal. Wow. And like, it had sounds similar to, have you listened to, I was looking it up cause I was blanking on it. But uh, the Audible or read the book, Becoming Elizabeth Arden. No. Oh my gosh, it's fascinating. Oh my gosh. It's all about Elizabeth Arden and how she became the mecca of skincare, beauty, all of it. It's fascinating. It sounds like they're similar. I love all of that. Mm -hmm. That's like so cool. Like anytime I, I see that or I hear about a woman who's really like broken barriers and like, mm -hmm. you know, this just paving the way for us. Yeah. That is so inspiring. Yeah. Like okay, when... I have another question now. Yeah. <laughs> it brought me to, because you're inspiring and you've done so many things. Um, you're so talented and I respect you so much. And I think you're such a giver, like exactly like what you've said with mentorship. And you're just really trying to connect with people. You're not someone to be like saying yes to every conference. You selectively do what you want to do and, mm -hmm. and then you run your practice. But I selfishly do conferences to hang out with my friends. Yeah. yeah it's a social thing. You go to the <laughs> ones that your friends are at. Yeah. It makes sense. But what would you say would be either your lowest point in your business career or in aesthetics in general? Let's start with that. What would be like your lowest point, either something that happened to you or financially with your business or what was it? I think when I first started, I was struggling to find a job, you know, um, which is another reason why like the mentorship means a lot to me because I know people are struggling. Um, so when I first started, I had already experience as an assistant, right? So I knew 
to do facials. I was already doing like tattooing, microblading, like what, like all of that was already in my repertoire, right? I was already doing it. I kind of had a clientele for that. And I was like, I don't know. I, I, when I graduated from NP school, I was like, oh, it's going to be easy. Like, I'll just find a job, like, you know, and then I couldn't find a job. Like it took me nine months to find a job that wasn't even the job that I wanted, you know? And there were so many points there that I just wanted to quit. And I was like, I don't even want to do this anymore. Like I'm never going to find a job, you know? And throughout that experience, it was very slow. I was like, am I going to find a job? Like, you just don't know. It's like up in the air. And then I ended up just by chance getting a job with a really well-known plastic surgeon, which even to this day, I still like thank him for, you know, it wasn't even him that gave me the opportunity. It just kind of happened. It was, it was like all the stars aligned, you know? Love it when that happens. Um, what? I love it when that happens. Yeah. All the stars aligned and I was like, okay, this is, I didn't even want the job by the way. Cause I had heard a lot of things. The, the med spa part didn't really have a great reputation. And I just had to kind of give myself a pep talk and be like, well, look, like this is your opportunity. You need to like figure this out. And when I first started working there, it was absolutely torture. Cause like I, one didn't really know what I was doing. I had never worked in a med spa before as an injector. I felt a lot of pressure, you know, and then like they pay you the salary and they're like, but you have to make all this other this money to like make up for it. So it's like a lot of pressure for you, you know, and you're like, okay, but I don't even know what I'm doing. Like help. And there's no one to help you. Yeah. Right. Cause like back then it was like 10 years ago, like who was helping me? Like nobody. Mm -hmm. So, and again, that's like one of the reasons I went back and I was like, you know, I want to mentor people. Cause I was like, I went, I went through all this myself. So I would say like, I would, I would like cry all the time. And like, there was always like drama and like all these like girls at the, at the office. There's like, too many, too many women, you know, like one of those situations. And I was like, I just need to figure out how to make this work for me. And I kind of reassessed the situation. I was like, okay, this is going to be my, my plan. And I kind of went step by step day by day and, and it ended up working out, but it took me a long time. Like it took like a good year to like feel comfortable and feel like, okay, like I can do this. Cause I really wanted to quit. I was like, it would be so much easier for me to just like go do lashes and not even use my degree, which is crazy. It's like, yeah, it's crazy. you know, but, but you get so discouraged because, you know, again, male plus, I, I can't even tell you how many job interviews I went on and like, they wouldn't even want to pay. They're like, well, we'll pay you commission. I was like, I don't even have any clients. Like, how does that work? Like, how do people even live? I know. Like, I don't get it. It's not like, you know, you know, you went to medical school, you have a medical degree, you could probably do whatever, you know, just to even make money to get by. Right. But like, as a nurse practitioner, they were offering me like jobs and like, you know, I, my background was in, I worked in the cath lab. Like, so I would get jobs in like cardiac labs and and like cardiac centers and I was like I would rather literally slit my wrists like there's no way like the only reason I went back to school was to be able to do aesthetics like that's literally the only reason so yeah. I was like I have to kind of remember why I went and just move forward mm -hmm. and that's what I had to do I mean I, 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 I like prayed every day and I just kept going just Love kept that. going and like fake it till you make it you know yeah. Yeah. And now look where you are. And I think it's a great, a great lesson for so many people that think that Instagram's reality and things just happen overnight. I mean, it's just obviously not a reality. And what you said about the training was interesting because that's one thing that I've implemented even in the past six months is a very intense and structured onboarding system and training platform essentially for clinical and non-clinical non team members. So when our trainee, our trainees, I guess at the time come in, they get access to all of these, this whole school classroom of amazing. videos and questions and they have to pass everything. They have to do it. You know, I have to see them do it. They have to be taught it. They have to really check the boxes of everything to be checked off and can be 
can now do the treatment. It's changed the game in so many ways, more ways than I even imagined, but also it's now standardized the providing the, the care that we provide for G, from G-Face. So every location, which we're working on our third location. Amazing. Exciting. Everybody will be the same. I don't know how you have the energy for that. Like I think about that and I'm like, no. I don't know how you have the energy and you have a family and like, I don't know how you do it. You're like super It's cool. a lot. Well, it's a lot. It's a lot, but it's not me. It's the team. And I am yeah. able to do the third location so soon because of the team. Yeah. Um, and the management side of things. Which, but the thing is like, you, you're giving credit to the team, but I, I want to say also that I would have to give credit to you because you're the one that's assembling the team and you're the one that's putting all of these things in place, which takes so much time and effort. Like just getting this mentorship thing on my end has taken me like so long yeah. because there's so many details and so many things that I want to include in it. And like, I can't even imagine like doing a whole platform for like training and doing all these like, oh my God, overwhelming. Like how long did that take? So again, I didn't do it. So I have hired okay. absolute badasses and okay. they, I'm the visionary. So yeah, there's a little bit of like, getting off the ground and training, but now they're all part of my brain. It's like split into all these different quadrants with everyone okay. owns a piece of it. And I'm the visionary. So now I just either respond to an email. What do you think? I agree. Da, da, da. Okay. Yes. What do you think? I don't make any of the small day-to-day -day decisions. They do it all. And I make the bigger decisions. So yeah. when it comes to a training academy, I said, you know, this is the way I want it. And then it just showed up kind of like the conference that I've created that this year is like tripled in size with attendees. It's so exciting. Amazing. And I'm really, you know, Sydney, Dr. Weiner's daughter is running it. She has built the entire thing. She has done everything start to finish and I've made some decisions and transferred funds for things. Yeah. But I show up. So I think that's what you have to do in order to build this team. You have to relinquish control. And sometimes what I found is my burnout or my lack of, cognition or energy at that time is actually my superpower because I don't have a choice other than yeah, to let them do it. Kind of delegate and like allow other people to take over and take yeah. control, which, you know, is, it, it, it is really hard. Yeah. You know, to do yeah, that, that right you have like a ba your baby and you're like, here, <laughs> take it, do what you want. But Here's if you get money. to the point, which I was at probably January of this year, eh, no, last year, January, maybe, I was like, I hate this baby. Like, I can't do it anymore. I can't show up. I don't want to do it. That's when you know. What are you going to well, do? Well, that's the point that you're like, okay, do I keep doing it or do I get, do I like kind of, I don't want to say give up, but yeah. do I just let it be, mm -hmm. you know? And then you decide, it's up to you. Like. Do I want to keep feeding this baby or do I want to kind of, yeah. that's how I feel about the Fillers Anonymous, you know, like I love it and it's amazing, but I don't have the energy and like, I have so many times, so many times I've like, you know, I, Erica loves, you know, uh, Retro Bunny, she like loves the brand and I'm like, do you want to take it over? <laughs> do you want to, do you want to hire someone to take it over? You know, cause like, I just don't have the time. But what if you hire like a high school kid or an intern just to run? Because at the end of the day, you do want to transition. Well, I do. I don't know. Yeah. To this, you know, laborless money, right? Yeah. You think about it online. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't require any of that. So at the end of the day, it's nice to have. And if you had just a little bit of part-time help, it could take the edge off. And yeah. um, you know, it's funny that you say that, like uh, an intern or like a high school kid, but it's like where do you even find these? Like, I remember one time I was looking for a social media intern and that was like a whole ordeal. And I'm like, what, don't people want to work? Yeah, no. No. So it's like, and then they want, they want all the stuff, like they want money. Then I'm like, I'm like, how about I do your lips and you do, you know, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, can we just do a trade? Like you're in high school. How much money do you need? Like what is happening? Or even like college kids, they want, they need like a part time or, you know, they want to get experience in the field or whatever it is. And, but everybody is, I don't want to say everybody, but like, I find that people are more entitled. They want money. They don't want to work. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you and I, I'm pretty sure worked like, oh my God. you had to like work your ass off to get anywhere or get anything. And now you have like TikTok, social media, like, yeah, just that people don't want to work. They feel entitled. I was just saying that you and I worked our asses off to get, yeah, to get where we are. And, like, now I feel like there's just so many avenues for people to, like, 
kind of not work and you're constantly being bombarded i find like even on instagram or tiktok where oh like i made all this money and i just you know it was like took me 10 hours and i'm like really multi-level marketing yeah sure it's like oh uh Nothing yeah i think you have hours. Hours. yeah yeah i also was un always under the mindset or on the mindset of you know i I wanted to do it first because I wanted to know how to do it and I wanted to learn it and be able to teach someone else how to do it. But that's also micromanagement because then you're teaching them your way. Yeah. So true delegation is when you let them come up with the ideas as well. So now we just had team meeting this today and they're like, we need an idea for new wholesalers when they um, come to the booth at our conference, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, just make the decision. I, I am indifferent, I don't care. Uh, so I, I really just allow them to yeah. make decisions at this point. No way. But, but they've gone through the, a bunch of t other tests where you know. Right. Them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And knowing and yeah, that was my next piece is I trust them. I know that they think similar similarly to me. And when we don't align, I'm like, oh, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. You know, and sometimes it's what I want and sometimes it's not what I want. <clears throat> but it's true. It's transitioning from those small decisions that are exhausting every day. I become unable to make decisions. I, right now, I feel like I'm in that position. Uh, because you just get it's decision making fatigue. Yeah, I that's like that's like how dating things. apps are. Oh my gosh, <laughs> how's that going? After you swipe on like five people, they're like, I don't care. That's, there's no <laughs> more. I can't get any more decisions. Like, no, <laughs> and just the thought of going out with you makes me just like, Bleh. no, no, no. Okay, so another question I have is, uh, what would you see in your life as? you know, the turning point. So you inject and I guess that's, you've kind of already answered that question now that I think about what it. Was but where was a turning point for transitions for you? Transitioning from injecting to mentoring. Mm -hmm. um, how are you fostering this? Because obviously, you know, it brings in a different kind of money, but you have to foster that community and get those yeah. people to sign up for your mentorships and stuff. Um, actually, in the last six months, I switched to a social media company that has been, I've been wanting for a long time to kind of speak more on my Instagram, but it's very difficult for me because I hate speaking on Instagram. I've seen it and you look amazing and you're doing amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so I started working with this company that I got then, you know, through a fr another friend of mine and they're great and they really help and they're, they're so efficient. Like I give them an idea, they're like running with it, you know, it's great. So good. So, that kind of started and then like i would say you know if you want to join the community like comment mentor and like you know 50 100 people comment mentor and it started building the community you know just based on like those from those videos because i was kind of testing it out i mean i think the first test was like the lip recipes i did the lip recipes and i thought like maybe 10 people would buy it like for real like that was like honest truth like i made this book and i it was like a book with 40 different lips and like how to get from the before to the after and i was like oh yeah like maybe 10 people will buy this like, who's gonna buy this and i remember that the girl who designs my websites and all the stuff like she works in the philippines so she works overnight and she had messaged me and she's like more do you know that you already have like 30 people on a wait list and i'm like what wow. like i couldn't even believe it because i was like what like the That's first awesome. day the first day that I released it, we sold 50 ebooks, which I couldn't even believe. I was like, so I, I was literally dumbfounded. I'm like, how did that happen? You know, cause you don't, I don't necessarily think anybody looks at my Instagram or like, you know what I'm saying? Like even people don't engage and if they're seeing it, they don't engage. So like, you really don't know like your influence or your power on Instagram or social media until like something like that happens. And then from there, I kind of moved on to this other social media company. I started talking more. Like now I'm building the community. <laughs> I was going to sneeze. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> that means it's true. Yeah. It is true. Yes. I mean, it's just, it's so amazing. And I think day to day when you have patients that come in and they're like, yeah, I found you on social media. And then my next response is, my response is that, you know, then you know everything because I put a lot out there, but it is the power of social media is massive, but that also comes with the bad too. Like the bad things on social media, but focus on the good. It's really good. Yeah. So, I'm that's trying awesome. to kind of like refocus on the good things and not like be negative about you yeah. know, have so much to be thankful for if you look at what is going on around the world. Oh, I know. I the know. fact that we get to go and do what we love 
you yeah. know, even just to complain or say like, like I'm going to inject today. It's like, no, Lamar, you remember? You're you remember lucky. like what you want, that's what you wanted to do. And you cried every day and that's what you wanted to do. Yeah. Remember that. Yeah. You know, because we forget, we take it for granted and you should not take it for granted because we are so lucky that we get to do what we love and that you have an amazing team around you. And you know, you've built that, you've built that yeah. Yeah. nothing from zero. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And there is the phrase, it's lonely at the top. And I think I have another podcast about that, but it's not, it is definitely lonely at the top. Okay. Like I'm not just going to sugarcoat this. It gets lonely because you're like, who are my friends? It's like my work people and then I don't have time for anything else and blah, blah, blah. blah. But if you bring them with you to the best of your ability and have them with you, it's a totally different game. Um, yeah. So it's, it's amazing. But I think that's where I found my, like when you say mentorship, I, my niche has been really the accelerated extreme growth during a time of hardship for a lot of people with inflation and all of this and, and how I've stepped away, how I've encouraged my injectors. How do you do that? How do you decide when to do that? Um, how do you look at the numbers? Do you have consultants that are helping you? I don't know if you work with Skytail or heard of them, but they're awesome. And they've transformed my company when it comes to really getting into the numbers. The numbers don't lie, but you have to know how to do it. Yeah. And um, which then leads you to creating incentives for your team. And, mm -hmm. you know, you said something about there's just commission. Well, we have base salary commission and bonuses every month that they can right. hit. I mean, it's incredible. But if you take care of your people, they'll want to grow with you. Well, this so is how do you do that? coming from like a, you know, an, an, an antiquated way of thinking, you know, back in the day of plastic surgeons. Mm hmm. And that's who I was interviewing with. Most of them were male plastic surgeons. And they were looking at you and they're like, but you don't really need any money, do you? That, <laughs> yeah, I don't need to live. I don't, I don't have a sugar daddy. Okay. <laughs> I need, I need, <laughs> I am the sugar daddy. Okay. I need, I need them. I need money to live. Like you can't just be like, oh, well, we'll just pay you commission. Like even when people ask me advice on how to start new injectors or like how to pay them, I say, you need at least six months to build up a clientele. So you need to have at least six months of salary for this person before you start transitioning them into a commission, maybe half commission, half salary, you know, and then kind of like transitioning them off of a salary. Mm -hmm. You have to be like really consistent. Like you have to have a consistent clientele. Like you can't just be like, Oh, well, now you're on commission. Like, no, that, <laughs> that doesn't work. Like I don't, no one's going to stay with you that way. They're going to end up taking all the clients that they built with you and going next door. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then you have nothing. So like you really have like what you're saying, you have to take care of your people. I've always been really in tune with that because I was an employee yeah. and I always thought like, well, why don't they care? Like, why don't they take care of us? Like, you know, I, to, the truth is like, I always say like, I would have never left my last office if it wasn't for the fact that you know, I wanted to do more trainings and it was kind of cutting into my, my work. Yeah. But I would have never left because they took really good care of me. I had a great situation. Like, I worked three days, you know, wow. it was great. That's but, awesome. but I had to, I mean, I still work three days. Well, that's, that's not true. I see patients three days. I was just going to say, I don't think I believed you, but. <laughs> <laughs> I see patients three days. I work every day. There's always some work going on. Yeah. There's always some work. Um, that's awesome. So how do people sign up for your mentorship and your, I guess Hillers Anonymous is a little bit more Google. Well, I have, stuff. well, I have the AI course right now. Okay. That's actually going to be November 2nd to 4th. It's a challenge. It's a three day challenge. It's 90 minutes every day. And wow. basically going over like everything from A to Z. Like one is like setting up your chat GPT, customizing it figuring out how to do, how, how to prompt properly so that you don't get generic answers, uh, making your workflow more efficient. There's just so many things, marketing, social media, uh, you know, converting long form videos into short form, like just so many things. Like every day is a different thing. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So it's just all these things that I've used myself that I find so helpful. And I've done a lot of challenges myself, like AI challenges. And I'm like, okay, like this is things that I could use for aesthetics. And I kind of put it all into one place and I love that. Yeah. I mean, I encourage even, even if like you wanted to take it and you have like your staff there or yeah, I would love to. Yeah. You just, um, 
it's uh, it's going to be recorded anyway, so if you can't make all three days, you can watch it later. And then the mentorship is, you know, pretty standard. When you sign up, you get a very long questionnaire. It has about 15 questions on it to really hone in and focus on, like, what your issues are. And then what we do is we do a monthly call. We do a... Um, a monthly call with a group and then a monthly call just with you just to see like where you are and your goals and then we also have like a whole program that basically takes you from a to z like it tells you everything that you need to know i contemplated making it shorter like maybe making it like eight weeks or 12 weeks or six months or but i just felt like being able to actually implement the things that you learn takes time and if you are speeding it up and it's too fast it just gets lost and then you're really into it for eight weeks and then you're just like, eh. Yeah, no. I would agree with that. So if you're, if you're doing it and you're investing for a year, that's going to become a habit for you. That's going to become something that you're continuing to do, like even past the mentorship, you know? So that's why I kind of, you know, going into the psychology, like human psychology and like how you create habits. Like even, you know, they tell you going to the gym, it's not a habit until you're doing it for six months, you know? know. Anything, anything that you're going to learn, it's going to take time to like really implement it into your business or like, you know, then you, then what happens is, you know, you start implementing things and you have hiccups, right? And then you're like, okay, but now who do I talk to? Cause like my mentorship is over, Yeah. you know? So that's yeah, one of the reasons I did it. I did it for a year. And even if you don't want to do the mentorship, I have a community, you can join the community and be a part and kind of like, have fun. I love it. Learn. I love it. Learn from everyone. I learned so much. Okay. Like the things that I, I'm like, wow. You really, That's I learned so, so much from, from the people, from people in general. Like anytime yeah. I do a training, anytime I, I have a call with someone, I'm like, oh. like <laughs> it just, cause you're alone, right? It's lonely. Mm-hmm. You don't really talk to a lot of people. I mean, you, maybe you do, but I don't. So <laughs> I don't, I don't have a lot of people to like pull ideas from or things. I'm just like, by myself over here so oh, you can always call me yeah i know you're busy <laughs> um this has been so much fun i cannot wait to see you in connecticut it's gonna I be know. awesome it's literally tomorrow i know is well, it tomorrow is today wednesday or thursday wednesday. wednesday oh yeah it is tomorrow oh my gosh i've got to get my stuff from the alterations that's a good thing i'm sure you're gonna be dressed for the nines are we doing scrubs like what are we doing yeah i'm gonna do scrubs during the days Okay. Because um, it's really patient heavy. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, and a lot of threads. So, yeah, scrubs, sneakers, be comfortable. And then it's girl, really just a Halloween girl, costume. I'm, I'm, I live in Florida. You know I'm showing up with Uggs, right? Uh, it's Uggs. It's time to wear Uggs. So. It is don't, chilly. Don't judge me. It is chilly. There's no yeah. judgment. Judgment free. Uh, <laughs> but I can't wait to see you. Thank you so much for sharing everything. <laughs> Tell everybody your Instagram so they can go over and find you. Okay, my Instagram is Beauty Bay, and it's spelled B-E-A-U-T-I-E dot Bay, B-A-E. And the Bay stands for Before Anything Else. I love that. It's been for, like, ever. You know that my name used to be Botox Bay, like, back in the day? And it was funny, but I changed it, like, years and years ago. And I remember when I met, like, Botox Bunny and Botox Josh, and I was like, you guys have that name like that's so interesting like you guys didn't change your name hmm. you know what I mean because I was yeah. I don't know why I was thinking like Botox name brand like they're gonna come after me at some point like I had like three followers you know yeah but I was just like mm, probably should change that yeah so I ended up doing Beauty Bay and when I met them I was like really you guys have that name that's so interesting like my name used to be Botox I still have a card and it. and then like they changed their names in the end you know I was like oh okay yeah yeah, you did the right thing. There you go. There you go. I love that for you. Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank again. you so much, Gretchen, for having me on. This has been so fun. I hope to do it again. I know. And Not on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, we can do an Instagram live. So everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'm so excited for you to meet Lamora Weinberg. Follow her on Instagram. Like, subscribe, share. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.